Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Mr. Tie-Dye and today we're going to do a discharge design and this one I'm going to call Infinite Love. Uh, a couple years ago I had done a tapestry with the infinity symbol running this way and then I did a couple hearts on the other side and that one I named Infinite Love. But immediately upon doing that I had the idea to do the infinity symbol out of the two hearts and then I just never got around to it and I see that uh, it has been done by some other people but last night I was sitting in meditation and that's where a lot of my ideas come from and I was inspired to create this t-shirt and then eventually do a meditation that I call infinite love so to start out with is I'm going to discharge this t-shirt so I'm going to do two different designs I'm going to do the infinity symbol with hearts on the front and then on the back I'm going to do a portal shape because we have the Lionsgate portal that will be at its peak tomorrow it's already open now but anyways I think just the the energy of the Lionsgate portal inspired my meditation for the infinite love and the infinite love meditation so we're just going to jump right in and do that. So I have here a clean uh, pre-washed tea. It's barely damp. I just I washed it and then I pulled it out of the spin cycle so it's just barely damp right now. So to start with I'm going to draw my lines on. Uh, normally if I was going to do a design front and back I would center the tee by tucking one sleeve into the other. But that puts the fold going right down the middle. This design I'm going to do on a diagonal. So what I'm going to do is draw myself a line going across the T here and then I'll do the same thing on the back just so I can keep track of that same line and then I will pull the front of the T up. So, and normally what I've done in the past is taken a washable crayon um, or dry erase crayon and they wash right out with just hot water in the normal wash and it's kind of hard to draw on here but I, I always am looking for a new way of doing things and one thing I, I discovered uh, for drawing these lines with crayons <clears throat> is if you're drawing a straight line you can stick your ruler underneath and I'm basically lining up from the shoulder down to the corner of the the shirt here that's where I want my my line to be so what I'm gonna do is just pick that up and kind of smooth that t-shirt out along the the ruler the yardstick and then you can just run that dry erase crayon right down the ruler and put a nice line a nice straight line on your t-shirt so let's pull that back out lay this out so we can see our line so yeah, we got a nice straight line, and then the nice thing is I can flip this over and line my ruler up in the same fashion on the back side. Once again, going from the shoulder down to the, the bottom hem in, yeah, so the bottom corner there. So I'm just drawing it in the, the same relative area here. I mean, I could pick it up and look at the back side just to verify, but I just want kind of a, a general nice line there. So the same thing, just line that up, smooth that out, and then you can draw your line nice and straight. And then that just gives you a nice line to pick up when you're doing your folding here. So now what I'm going to do is pick up just the front of the t-shirt. So I'm just sticking my hand inside here and I'm grabbing the line down at the bottom and at the top. Once you have that, then I kind of just shake the t-shirt out. That's just getting the, the back of the t-shirt shook out there and pulling just the front forward. Once I have that, then I just kind of work it, laying this down <clears throat> and getting my line. I just want my line right here on the front of this crease as much as I can get it there. With me straightening out and flattening the T as much as I can just to be able to work with that center part. Oh, the other thing. 
I want to be able to know where I'm going to fold my t-shirt in half because this design I fold it in half one way and then in quarters so I fold the other direction. So I want to be in about the center of this line here. So I'm just going to line that up and that's about 34 inches so 17 inches so there is the center of my line so uh, like I say I'm going to fold along this line and then I will fold in half right there Then just a matter of making sure that it's all smooth under there, that your t-shirt is laying flat, that it doesn't have wrinkles in there or parts of the back of the T tucked in here. And then what I'm going to do is fold it in half right there at that line. And I'm just going to fold this straight along so this whole line that I drew, I'm just folding it on itself right at that center point there. And then the key is to get just more of your t-shirt to lay flat here along this big fold. So on one side you have your two lines and on the other side you have the one big thick fold. That's where we're going to draw our heart on here, or half a heart. So you want to just get that as nice and flat in there as you can. Get as much of the back of the t-shirt pulled out as possible. Oh, hold on a second, my water's boiling. Okay, so it's just like I say, a matter of flattening this out as much as possible. I have a stencil here so I can kind of see just how much of that t-shirt I need to flatten out. I realize I need to do just a little bit more up here. The other thing is you could just do a smaller heart, but I already kind of measured and this one will fit on here if I can get the rest of the t-shirt pulled out of this center spot here. And it's just these creases here. It's the back of the t-shirt and the sleeve and stuff. So you just got to kind of hold everything in place and just kind of reach in there and flatten things out. And the more time that you spend getting your t-shirt prepped, the better your design is going to come out. And I can still feel a couple wrinkles in there, so... Okay, I'm back. So after all that struggle, I decided to just make it a little bit smaller of a, a stencil here. So, because just trying to fold all of these extra bits of the shirt, since I'm folding it diagonally, I could do it straight up and down, but I really want the, the infinity symbol going at an angle. So I just made a smaller stencil. And now I can feel my little wrinkles here and where this one here wouldn't quite fit in there, this one here does. So we're just going to go with just a smaller infinity heart symbol in there. And just move right along with this video. Thank you for your patience. And once again, I'm using my washable or dry erase crayon. I found these on Amazon and I'll try to remember to put a link to them down in the description box. But they're great for marking on black tees because they wash right back out again. Draw your heart there and then we're going to fold along this line here. So now I got my heart tight on there. Now we're going to go with sinew. This one being just a little bit bigger, I'm going to do a slip knot. The way I do a slip knot, grab the short end, make a loop, wrap around once, poke it through, and then you just pull that. That makes it easy to just slide this over top, so I'm going to compress that again. And then I'm going to line this up on there and the main thing that I'm trying to do is make sure that this little point down here that I'm going right 
down to the the point there or just on the other side of that next to the the two creases if you put your line just on there then that just puts just a little bit of a, a little space there for the infinity symbol kind of connects them together if you go right down the middle then the two points of the heart are going to touch if you go on the thick edge with your line then you're going to have a little bit of a gap between the two hearts so if you want to connect them together you need to go right over top of the point or over onto the side where the two creases are so I hope that makes sense there. I'm going to go over on the side where the two creases. I just want just a little bit of a, a space within the hearts to connect them together. So I'm just lining this sinew up now. Just a little bit to the side of that point. And I've come down and I've drawn just to the edge, I mean not right on the point, but I drew it right over to the edge there on the double side there. So let's clip that out and I'll show you what that is going to look like on your tapestry. You're going to have two hearts for the infinity symbol that they're going to be connected together and there's going to be a little bit of space. So depending on how far over you come on your line here if you finished your line out over here you're gonna have a wider gap and if you finish it right here you're gonna have a skinnier gap so that's the thing but if you go on the other side of the point then you're gonna have two hearts that aren't connected so this one here I didn't I kinda of drew right on the point but if I go down off of the point here on the the fat side of the line and snip that. Then, like I say, that opens up and when you open up your tapestry, there are going to be two hearts on it with a little bit of a gap in between them. And that's because on the tapestry, going on the other side of that line, you didn't connect the, the two pieces there. And I'm going to wrap it around a couple times. And this first time, I'm just kind of pulling it tight while I hold that just to take some of the slack out. And I can see my, my slip knot spinning around on there. So now I'm going to wrap a couple more times. I usually will wrap that tail down underneath, wrap the sinew over top of it. Sometimes I'll cut that tail off. But once I get that wrapped around a couple more times, I'm going to hold down with my hand and I'm going to pull back nice and even with my arm going back this way. So if the sinew breaks, my arm is going back, not pulling up towards my face. And I just want to make sure I get a really nice black line in there. So I'm going to wrap around three more times and pull that tight. Now from this point, what I like to do is cut off, leave a little bit of a tail so that I have an easy place to grab it, but also these tails sometimes after the whole out white bright thing can kind of split and separate and just become a rat's nest. So what I do will tie a big knot in the end that just makes it easier when I'm going to unwrap this to grab that knot and pull that sinew off of there. Okay, so there is the infinity hearts on the front of the T. Now remember I said that I wanted to put a portal on the back side of the T. So now it's just a matter of opening this t-shirt back up a little bit, finding my line back here. And I can find it going from the bottom corner. Although I didn't mark the center of it, I can kind of come pretty close just as I line things up. So there's a shoulder line there. So I can see my line in there, so I have a good idea of where that is. And I'm just going to grab kind of the middle part of the t-shirt, the back of the T. And once again, it's just a matter of getting that line up on top 
of my crease here where I'm folding it. Okay. So, uh, I'm not planning on doing a fancy portal. I'm just doing just a simple one. So, I'm even just going to kind of freehand my circle on here a little bit. I don't need, uh, I'm not looking for a perfect portal, but I just want something. So, I'm going to kind of draw my own little half circle, just something to follow my pleats with. You can certainly be more precise with this. You can draw a nice half circle on here, triangle. There's all kinds of shapes that you could do. But since I'm dealing with this diagonal thing that I created myself, <laughs> I'm just going to go with just a simple little portal here on the back just to give me a little bit of something. So I'm just going to pleat that up. And this one here, I don't feel like I need to tie a slip knot because this is a little smaller of a space that I'm tying up. So I'm just going to wrap it around a few times, real tight, wrap it a few more times, and then pull it nice and tight. So really I just want a little bit of a resist pattern here to give me kind of a black ring on the back. I'm going to leave the center open just because I want it to be uh, more white so that I can kind of scrunch that up and, and dye that. Anyway, so we're going to just stop right at that point there. So now I have my Infinity's Hearts on the front, and I have my little Lionsgate portal here on the back. And then the whole t-shirt is going to get discharged, so the rest of the color is going to come out of everything except for right here and right here. And this here is going to be kind of some lines and then some not lines. So, like I say, I just wanted that little bit of texture. So stay tuned while I reheat my water up to boiling and we're going to get this going with some out white bright. Forgot to mention that. That's what we're going to be using today to discharge. So we're going to use boiling water and we'll be back in about two seconds. Okay, so when working with this you want to work either outside or have an open window like I do here because the fine dust fumes, you don't want to be breathing those. So if you're going to be working inside, maybe you want to wear a mask. The other thing, when you pour the boiling water, you want to make sure you stand back so the two things, you don't get splashed by the boiling water as you're pouring it, but also you don't want that steam coming up in your face and your eyes. So take uh, precautions. And since this one here, I'm going to discharge the whole t-shirt. I'm going to start out by putting just kind of a little bit of a layer on the bottom of the tub here and you can see immediately how this dust is rising up that's what you want to be careful of Oop, I can hear my water hold on okay my water is ready so now what I'm going to do is just kind of poke the rest of the t-shirt I'm just kind of getting it all down in there just as flat as I can I'm going to pour more out white bright over top of everything especially over top of the two places where I tied but Really, I want to get the whole tee covered, so I'm just doing just a light co covering here. And now we're going to take the boiling water. Like I say, this is freshly boiling, so you want to make sure you don't splatter. I always pour slowly, so I don't splatter, but also I stand back, so I don't get the steam up in my face. But as soon as you start pouring, you can see the reaction happening, and the colors start coming out. That's one of the things I like about Out White Bright is it works very quickly. But I'm pouring enough hot water in here to really just kind of coat the whole tea. And then you can kind of slosh it, stir it around, turn it over and stuff. It's best. I still haven't gotten them myself, but if you have a pair of tongs to work with, that will greatly help since this is boiling water you don't want to stick your fingers down in there 
but I can move that around. I use my cuticle pusher, and if I wear gloves, I can usually pick it up briefly to flip it over, but for this one here, since we're doing the whole thing, it's easy enough just to kind of slosh the whole t-shirt around, since I had the out white right on top and below. And I'm going to let this sit for about 20 minutes just to make sure that we get as much color out there as we can. You can also turn that around just so that the, I have it on just a little bit of an angle here. So the deeper part, you can kind of tuck the whole t-shirt down in there. All right, I'll stop rambling. I'm going to let this sit for about 20 minutes and then we're going to do a good rinse out and then we're going to get it dyed. So stay tuned. Okay, so this t-shirt has sat for about 20 minutes or so, and I don't think any more colors coming out. <clears throat> we got a lot, so I'm just going to go right into rinsing. And what I do is usually just go right straight with cold water to kind of cool things down a little bit. You want to be careful that you have cooled it down sufficiently before you start picking it up and squeezing it around. But I'm just going to kind of squeeze it to get more of this chemical water out of there. I don't want anything that's going to interfere with the dyeing process. So I usually will rinse it good in the sink and then I usually will do a spin out in the washing machine. Uh, I don't put water in there, I just spin it. I mean, I mean, I don't fill it up and agitate or anything. I just set it into the empty drum and turn on the spin cycle. And I know some washers spray water during the spin cycle. And when you're spinning out something that's been soaked in soda ash, that's not a good thing. But when you're spinning out something like this, then that is good. So usually what I'll do is spin it out to get the excess chemicals out and then I'll rinse it some more and then I'll spin it out another time and then it's usually good and ready for dye at that point so anyways that's what we're going to do I'm going to take this back and spin it out and then finish rinsing it and then we'll be back for dyeing so stay tuned okay so this is after I did uh, the good rinse here in the sink and then I spun it out and this is the side that was against the the wall of the washer so the chemicals are being pulled through the fabric and out to this side and I can see just a little bit of discoloration on this back side meaning that I have most of the the chemicals uh, already rinsed out of there uh, sometimes when I do the spin out this whole back side will have this orangey brown color on it which means that there's a lot more in there so this one I can probably do just one more quick rinse and then spin it out and then it'll be ready for some some dye so that's that's the thing that's how I like mine to to look when I'm done like I say I could probably get away with that but I'm gonna do one more just because but yeah Anyways, so we're going to just do a quick rinse and then we'll be back for dyeing it because all the chemicals should be out at that point. Okay, we're back. So uh, like I say, I gave this another rinse. I spun it out again. This time I flipped it around so that this side was against the basin. This time this one was. And you can see much less of the, the color is showing through now. So I'm pretty sure that most all of the chemicals are out of this. So at this point I could soak this in soda ash and tie dye it, but I have been also playing with the process of putting the soda ash on at the end. So that's up to you guys whether you soak it in soda ash at this point and dye it or whatever. You can also open it up, but I wanted to dye it while it was partially tied or at least the front. The back side I was gonna pull this one off just because I want to scrunch up this uh, portal a little bit just to get a really nice scrunch on that so I'm gonna go ahead and open that up now and then I'm gonna retie that and tie it with just kite string <clears throat> and then this one I'll probably set it aside to dry for a while so there's my portal so I got some nice black in there with just a little bit of white lines so all of that will take on color. So now what I'm going to do is just laying that just flat down 
<clears throat> I didn't want to open it up more because I want to be able to scrunch just this part and then retie it back up with, with sinew so, or with kite string. So that's what I'm going to do here is just do kind of a, a nice scrunch just on this portal here. I'm going to dye the portal in blue and the rest of the shirt in green. So that's why I want to tie this part up separately here. But also I wanted to get a nice scrunch on it because I'm going to dye it in light blue and then I'm going to put a little bit of dark blue over top of it. So I want to make sure I get a nice patterning effect. And that's just going to be achieved by doing a better scrunch job on this. But I certainly could have just left it tied up and dyed it that way, but this way will give me just a, a nicer scrunch pattern on this portal. Lots of options and very little rules when it comes to tie-dye. There's so many different ways that you can do this and the way that I have learned most of what I do is just through experimentation. Uh, I've had you know a few people over the years show me various tips and tricks and stuff, but you can take those tips and tricks and use them in so many different ways. There's not really a lot of hard, fast rules in tie-dye. I mean, one of them being that if you're going to use the Procyon dyes, you do need to use soda ash at some point in your process, but there's not a rule as to when you need to use it. Uh, well, I guess... <laughs> sorry. That's a big statement. Technically there is win, but the win is before you batch it. So that's the difference. You don't have to pre-soak before you dye it. Just as long as you have the soda ash, the cotton, and the dye, Procyon dye, all present when you batch it, then you're good to go. But other than that, you can play with tie-dye in so many different ways. And I recommend some of my videos I talk more than others. But I talk kind of whatever just comes to my mind. So even though a design might not interest you, you might still watch the video because you never know what I might have said in that video. <laughs> and there's a lot of videos. I got, like, I think over 300 videos now. So yes, a lot of talking. I know some of you like that and some of you don't, but I'm going to do it the way I'm going to do it. Okay, so there is my my portal. So I tied, I wanted to tie that up separately because it's going to be dyed in blues, but the rest of the t-shirt is all going to be dyed in greens. So now what I'm going to do is flatten this out as much as I can. And when you fold diagonally, then you kind of have things all kind of cattywampus here. The sleeves don't line up in the same fashion. But you can kind of arrange them around. So really what I did was I kind of poked my hand all the way through both sleeves. And now I'm just slowly laying them down inside of each other and trying to lay the rest of the t-shirt as flat as possible around that. So there's the also the, the neck hole is right there. Goes down to the sleeve, here's the other sleeve. So I'm just kind of piling all three of those holes up on top of each other just <clears throat> to try to get the fabric, the t-shirt to lay as flat as possible. I don't want to end up having uh, too much fabric piled up in one area that then the dye doesn't get down in there. So just try to sort it out the best you can. Sometimes with some folds, <laughs> you can't help. I mean, like this here, I got this this flap here. I, I have to fold it back this way. I can't fold it over top of my design. But what I can do is kind of scrunch this around and take up some of the slack of this fabric off on the side here and put just a little bit of a ridge that I can lift up and look under. So it's just about manipulating the fabric however you can to get it to lay as flat as you can. Or at least that's part of my goal is getting the fabric to lay flat. Once again there's no hard and fast rules but 
this is how I do it. Infinity Hearts over here, my Lionsgate portal over here, tied up separately. So I'm going to, like I say, dye all of this green over here and then that part in blues. So stay tuned. I'm going to let this sit out and dry some just because I do have kind of some thick layers in there. I'm not sure if I'm going to ice dye this or just what I'm going to do with it, but... For now, we're going to let it dry, and then I'll be back, and we'll get some color put on it. So, peace for now. Happy Lionsgate. Okay, I'm back to get some dye put on this thing. Uh, it ended up sitting for a couple days because I had other things come up. So, today is the 9th, so we're the day after the, the Lionsgate. But, the portal still is open, and you can still do this tie-dye anytime, regardless of the portal. So... What I said I was going to do is dye the majority of the tea in green and then the little Lionsgate portal on the back that I did, uh, that's going to go into blue. So I'm going to, I always like to layer colors, so I'm going to use a bright green that I mix myself. I fill the bottle up probably three quarters of the way with lemon yellow and then I fill the top part with turquoise and that makes me a nice bright green. The more yellow that you use, the brighter the green is going to be. The less yellow, if you fill it like half and half, you're going to get more of a clovery, you know, looking green, a, a, a darker green. Anyways, you can play with your mixing back and forth. I like a really bright green, so I go about three quarters. And then for the orb over here I'm going to use turquoise in fact I'll probably yeah I think I'm going to light my turquoise up some use a really light turquoise and then I'm going to put just a little bit of bluebird over top of that so when I light my turquoise uh, just a second I'm going to fill this bottle up about halfway with plain water and then I'm going to top it up with the the rest of the way with turquoise just to kind of make a little bit lighter shade so I'll be right back Okay, so I filled this bottle up halfway, a little bit more than halfway with just plain water. There was still some dye in the bottle, so it does look light blue. And then all I do is take full strength turquoise and pour it in. And then that just makes me a nice lighter shade there. And I'm not going to fill it up all the way. I, I want a nice light blue for this. So... Okay, so we're going to put the turquoise back away for now, and we're going to use this light turquoise. So, back to the t-shirt. I'm going to go ahead and start uh, with the, the bright green, and put kind of a layer down, and then I'm going to cover it up with the emerald green. Uh, I just like layering my colors. and the This is that thick fold that I said that I had so I can kind of open that up and squirt some dye down in that little pocket there just to make sure that I don't end up with a big white space. Let me flip this around without getting my blue. So yeah this is this little pocket where I had all that fabric from doing this fold here and that also happens with the peace sign you have just kind of a little bit of a flap there so I just try to make sure I open that up and squirt some dye down in there. But as you move it around, you want to make sure that you don't drag your tea through this die that's on your table here. So, just be careful of that. Okay, so let's keep on dying here. There's the first coat. I usually like to leave this sit for just a couple minutes let that dye soak in further and then I'm going to go through and cover like I say all of the green I'm going to cover up with the emerald green and then the light turquoise I'll put the bluebird over top of it so for now I'm gonna let this sit I'll be right back okay we're back so now I'm going to go ahead and coat this I'm gonna go ahead and put the bluebird on first and I'm just going over and just putting a coat I'm not even covering all of the dye. <clears throat> really I just want to add some texture to it. If you coat it too heavily then you might completely cover the the first color that you put on. So <clears throat> the second coat is really about just kind of doing a light 
overcoating so you want to make sure you get that first layer in there really nice so that you don't end up with white spaces and the more you kind of play with the layer in and you can certainly just put one color in you don't have to do two but I like to layer things and now I'm going to leave this sit for a little while longer and then like I had said at the beginning you could have uh, after you did all the rinse out from the discharging, you could have soaked it in soda ash that point, at that point and then tied it up and dye it and you're good. But I've been playing with the process and just kind of liking it better because it works better for me at this time. But I do all my tying and dyeing with it just barely damp from the washer and then I add my soda ash at the end. So I just have a dye bottle. I just cut a little bit larger of a hole in the tip so that I can splash it on there. So I'll come back in a minute and show you how I add my soda ash at the end. But there's also a video that I made and I'll put a link to that down below where you either soak before you tie it, you soak after you tie it, or you soak after you dye it. So, anyways, I'll be back soon. Okay, this is that for a few minutes, and now I'm going to add my soda ash. And like I say, in my process, it can get a little bit sloppy, so I tend to go ahead and put it into my bin. Um, I have a bin that I have a rack on. These are just closet uh, shelves from Home Depot that I cut to length here. They have a lip on one side, none lip on the other, so I put a piece of PVC to keep it level within my container here. But what this does is allow, uh, you know, this is how I do my batching. I put a lid on this to keep it warm, but when I'm doing this part of the process, it allows the excess liquid mixed with the dyes and everything to just kind of drip right out of the t-shirt. So when I'm adding my soda ash at the end, like I say, I have a larger hole cut in the top of the dye bottle here. And then I just apply just the coat and let it kind of soak in. And then I flip it over and apply another coat. So that's all I'm going to do here. And you can see I only use just a little bit of soda ash there. So I let that sit for just a minute. because I like it to just kind of soak in before I flip it. And really it's about changing the pH of the cotton so that the dye will then activate and bond with the cotton fibers. So now I'm going to flip this over and just do the same thing on the other side. I just do a light coat. Okay. And there you can see I use probably about a half a bottle, maybe not quite, so maybe just under four ounces of soda ash is what I put on there. I don't measure it, I just squirt some on until it just looks like I've coated everything. And like I say, you can avoid this just by soaking it in soda ash like you normally do. But since this is what I'm doing today, I just thought I would show the whole process what I'm doing. But There's lots of options. Actually, there's just a few options. I'm rambling now. You guys have a good day. I'll be back when I'm ready to open this thing up. Peace. Good morning and welcome to Hippie Christmas with Mr. Tie-Dye. So we're going to get this Infinite Love t-shirt opened up. See what we get here. There's my Lionsgate portal that I put on the back. And then there's the infinite love. And I think once we wash this out, it'll be more apparent. But you can see the heart shape infinite infinity symbol there. So I love this. I'll be back in about two seconds for the reveal. Oh, and just so you know, after soon after I finished this here, I realized that I've made this very complicated by putting it on a t-shirt and doing it diagonally and doing a different design on the back. So, I immediately turned around, folded up a tapestry, and did another infinite love on a tapestry. And I was able to kind of demonstrate some of the folds a little bit better. So, this video is coming up first, but shortly after that is going to be the infinite love tapestry so you guys can stay tuned for a second video that 
we'll better hopefully better explain how to do this design so thank you for watching peace